Hi class. In 2014, New York Representative Carolyn, Mal Carolyn Maloney introduced legislation to create a Women's National History Museum as part of the Smithsonian Institution Network of Museums in Washington, D.C. And when she presented her speech to Congress, she held up 16-year-old Sybil Ludington uh, as her example of why this museum needed to be created. And she said, I quote, she rode farther and longer than Paul Revere. I have never heard of this young woman, so I felt like I needed to dig into this and try to understand who she was and what she was about. So the story goes like this. On November 26th in 1777, um, the British were heading toward a town named Danbury, which is about 15 miles from the Ludington's home. And Sybil was the daughter of Colonel Henry Ludington. He's the commander of the Dutchess County Militia in New York. And the story is that she went out in the dead of the night and she rode around for 40 miles all over her area and uh, alarmed people to the fact that the, they were coming and to call the militia to arms. And unfortunately, the British did take the town and they destroyed all the provisions. They didn't just take the town, they burned the town to the ground. And in, in the process of all that, they fatally wounded Brigadier General David uh, Wooster in the process. And so this is an interesting story to me for a couple of reasons. It's been likened to Paul Revere's ride. And what is different about Paul Revere's ride here is just the complete lack of success in the story. She, she went out and did this brave, amazing thing, but uh, it was completely unsuccessful and it didn't stop the British. Whereas Paul Revere went out and he wasn't alone. He was part of a network and he didn't actually complete his ride. However, they were successful in their endeavors and yet they're both kind of held up as heroes uh, of the war effort. And so one of them is a hero in in the advances that were made and the other was kind of a hero in strength of character. So they're kind of different in, in that way. Secondly, it's not entirely certain if Sybil existed, much less whether or not she even made this fateful ride. The first accounts of her came from a book that was written in 1880, so 100 years later, by Martha Lamb, and she wrote a book called The History of New York. And this story is a very short passage in this book. She did not cite any references or any sources, so there's no way to go back and verify her information. Uh, although she was very well known in, in was tended to be very detailed and precise about her research and she said herself that she would never have written anything that she did not validate from multiple sources and so so there's that. Um, there was another book that was written that was directed towards children and this book was written in 1952 and it was called Sybil Ludington's Ride and it was written by Eric Berry and the author of this story actually used the 1880 story as the historical basis and then he built up on top of that by embellishing and adding all kinds of information to turn it into a, a piece of fiction. And um, as I was researching, this is a, really interesting to me, I, I was researching and I found an article that was, re, that was talking about comparing her to Paul Revere. And um, the article was in History Magazine from 2011. It was completely lacking sources. There was no sources for the article at all. However, it retold the still story of Sybil, but rather than digging using the information from the 1880 article, it used the historical fiction piece from 1956 as its baseline. And so it used children's fictional li literature as its story, as, as, as resource, which was interesting to me. There was a lot of tidbits in there that I know were not included in the original piece. So it was very interesting to see how that played out. Um, What's also interesting about these about her is that she seems to continually come up at a time when we're really moving back toward patriotism, patriotism, patriotism heritage, and lineage. Um, in 1880, there was we were going through a time of intense nationalism, and the United States was really moving back toward um, re establishing its its revolutionary roots, and then again back in in. And the 1950s, we've got um, the we're on the brink of kind of feminism emerging. We're also dealing with the communist factor, and we're again moving back to sort of this patriotic time. It's the time when the Girl Scouts and the Boy Scouts were established, and so the idea of creating this 
ideal within our children was a real thing back then. In fact, there was a Sybil Ludington camp in New York where you could hike the trails that allegedly mapped out her midnight ride. So it was definitely a part of the culture. She was symbolic in the culture. It's really hard to know the legitimacy of this young lady's contribution to the war effort. Um, we probably aren't ever really gonna know for sure, but every time we have dug back into our revolutionary roots, every time we have that resurgence of patriotism that comes up, she comes up again. And so I think that she really represents symbolically who we aspire to be. And we have a tendency to use her as evidence of what we've done in the past, as inspiration for who we want to be now and in the future and I think that she is a beautiful rep beautiful representation of who we want to be as Americans who we have been as Americans um, and it's just a nice reminder of, of our of our history thank you